that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Amen. You may be seated. And if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 14. Second Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 14. We're still talking about prayer, and tonight we're going to talk about prayer under the Old Testament versus prayer under the New Testament. It's a huge difference here. Prayer under the Old Testament versus prayer under the New Testament. Now, I want to start off with a very familiar prayer that is quoted a lot. People say it over and over again. And uh, this, is so, this is why we've got to rightly divide the word of truth, because some of these, the prayers in the Old Testament are no longer relevant. And in some cases, to pray those prayers are going to be praying a bunch of doubt and unbelief, such as what we're reading now. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins, and then will I heal their land. Now, notice, uh, somebody says, well, what's the problem with this prayer? Well, uh, in the Old Testament under the law, the condition, it, the, the Old Testament under the law was conditional. The law was a conditional covenant. In other words, you had to do something in order to, to be able to deserve something. And so anytime you see, if you do this, then this will happen, that is the, the pattern of a conditional covenant under the law. Under the new covenant, it is no longer conditional. It is an unconditional agreement, meaning that God is not requiring for you to do something in order to enable him to do something. Now, that's, that's, that's how this thing is rightly divided. Anytime, and even in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see Jesus saying, if you forgive, then God will forgive you. That is a pattern of the law. That is the pattern of the old covenant agreement. Now, we're praying under the New Testament. And so anytime you see something or you're praying a prayer, uh, that requires, it's conditional. It says you got to do this and then God will do that. That prayer is, is invalid under this, 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 this New Testament and, and it's a waste of time. Now it sounds pretty and it sounds good when you hear this in prayer. If my people, which are called by my name, <laughs> shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, now, look at all of the conditions. All right? That's the condition. The, don't even go to then will I hear from heaven because what he says is if you don't do the first part of this prayer, then you won't get the second part. You won't hear from heaven. He won't forgive you of your sins, and, you, and your land won't be healed. Well, under the New Testament, you didn't have to do nothing to get uh, forgiveness for sin. You believed Jesus, and sins were forgiven. Yeah. Healing was already made uh, available to you. All the things that were promised, you know, you hear from heaven, not because of what you do. You hear from heaven because of what Jesus has already done. And so that's, 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 that's the foundation of what we got to understand here. I, I, and I'm not poking fun at this, but I'm saying if you're praying this prayer, stop it. Okay? It, it, is, an, it, is, a, it is a conditional prayer. It is, it is, it is totally going against uh, what Jesus has established under grace, if my people, which are called by my name, if you humble yourself, if you pray, if you seek my face, look at all the requirements before you can hear from heaven, get forgiveness of your sins and get your land healed. That is not a New Testament prayer. That is not a New Testament prayer. Somebody says, well, why should we let it go? Uh, let me show, show you this one more time. Luke 16, 16. This is why you should let it go. It is no longer valid. All of the, all of, see, the, the, like I said before, the Old Testament is true, but it's incomplete. 
because God just showed you bits and pieces as he came to Jesus. But here's why, here's why. Verse 16, 16, the law and the prophets, the law, the first four or five books of Moses and the prophets, that's the rest of the Old Testament written by prophets. Notice what he said, the law and the prophets were until John the Baptist, okay? Uh, but since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into it, okay? He says, the law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. So it stopped at John the Baptist. Why? Because Jesus came into the picture. John went to jail and Jesus came into the picture, all right? And we're still trying to, you know, operate under the law, which is conditional. But under the grace of God, it is unconditional. So we want to look at prayer under the Old Testament versus prayer under the New Testament. Now go to Psalms 51, verse 10 and 11. Psalms 51, verse 10 and 11. And you got to start picking up the patterns of the Old Covenant, the patterns of the Old Testament that we don't live under anymore. All right? Psalms 51 and verse 10 and 11. Now notice what he says, verse 10. Creating me a clean heart. Somebody says, what's wrong with that? Dude, I got a big problem with that. Created me. If you go and pray to God, God created me a clean heart. It's just a slap in Jesus' face because when you got born again, he gave you a clean heart. I'll show you that in a minute. He says, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 11, cast me not away from thy presence. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And you're praying, no, oh, don't cast me from your presence. And he says, take not the Holy Spirit from me. The Holy Spirit's going to be with you. I mean, you're sealed. You, you, you see this? If, if you're not aware of all these things, you will be praying according to the law, according to a conditional covenant, and you don't see nothing wrong with it, except you're just slapping Jesus in his face. He said, after all I did, so you don't have to pray those prayers anymore. you still praying them. That's because you always prayed them, you see. Like you were shocked yesterday, last night, not yesterday, but last week when I told you that uh, the, uh, uh, what was that, the, the Lord's Prayer should, should, is not a prayer. It wasn't a prayer at all. And, and, and I'm not going to go back there. Get last week's tapes, amen? All right, so it's all right for David to pray those words because he wasn't born again. So David prayed these words. It was all right for him because he wasn't born again. But under the new covenant, it is wrong for us to ask God to create in us a clean heart or to renew our spirit. God gave you a clean heart when you were born again, and you can't ever lose that clean heart. Your body and your mind may be defiled, but your born again spirit is sealed by the Holy Spirit and it will always, always, always retain relationship with God. Amen. Let me show you that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. I've realized people say they believe the Bible and then when I start so showing them this, they're thinking, well, what are you trying to do? Trigger. I can just read. I'm just saying we got to start reading. Okay? Verse 13, he says, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. My God, you ain't losing your clean heart. All right? Now, uh, let's look at Hebrews 13 and 5. Somebody might say, oh God, Please be with us as we meet today. Huh? Oh, Lord, we're at Bible study. Please be with, please, Jesus, please be with us today. Somebody said, what's wrong with that? It's again, you're slapping Jesus all upside the face, man. Look what he said in Hebrews 13 and 5. He said, let your conversation or your lifestyle be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have them. Here it is. For, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And if he says, I will never leave you nor forsake thee, and you're saying, oh, please be with us as we meet today, look at what you're doing. It should be, Father, I thank you that you promised to never, never leave me nor forsake me. Not, oh, God, please. You remember Jane Brown, please. <laughs> Please, 
You're begging him, please be with, please be with me, Jesus. Please be with me. That which means you have not, you have no confidence in what Jesus has done. You have no confidence in what the New Testament and what the grace of God is because you're still begging God to do what he's already done, trying to get God to settle what has already been settled. And, and, and you've got to know that or you're going to end up praying a bunch of doubt and unbelief and just wasting time and just wasting time. All right, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17. I mean, you, you came to Bible study tonight, you want some word, right? Amen. People get mad at me when I show them this stuff like this. They be like, like, well, what are you trying to say? I'm, I'm just reading. <laughs> this is a Bible we say we live by. Let's read it. Figure out what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Now, this is interesting. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, all right, once you got born again, you are in Christ, all right? He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. You're in Christ. Some things have passed away. Behold, all things are become what? New. So we don't need to approve, to approach God through a mediator uh, like, they, like they did in the Old Testament. We don't need to do that. Why? Why do we, we don't need a mediator like they did in the Old Testament. Jesus is what? He is our mediator. The Bible refers to the mediator in the Old Testament also as a daysman or stand between. Jesus is our mediator, so we don't approach God through a mediator. We don't approach God through a mediator. We don't approach God. I do not need to ever get in a booth and speak to some dude on the other side of a booth. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You don't do that. You don't, you don't do that. That's not an attack against somebody's religion. That's what the word says. I don't need an mediator. But that came from a conditional covenant that came from the law. Okay, they were needing a daysman. Didn't have one, but God knew that a daysman was going to come or a mediator. And Jesus is my mediator. I pray in the name of Jesus. All right. I don't need to ask God to make me worthy. Amen. Oh, God, make me worthy. I'm not worthy to pray. Stop slapping him up the face again. Um, yes, you are. Jesus made us worthy. Amen. All right, now, here's a big one. I, I, I said I wasn't going to deal with this tonight, but I need to. Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. Daniel 10, 12 through 13. Prayer doesn't have to pass through a demon. I explain that. You'll, you'll see it right now when I read it. Prayer does not have to pass through a demon. And you done prayed and ain't nothing happened and then you start binding the devil. I, 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 I believe a devil is just stopping my prayer. But the devil ain't stopping your prayer. You keep saying stuff that Jesus has already done. That's what's stopping your prayer. All right, now here's where that came from. Because you... you <laughs> Prayer doesn't have to go through a demon. Here's where it came from. Uh, from Daniel. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I, can, and, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me and, re and, re and remained there with the king of Persia. And I don't know, I don't know all about that, but Jesus wasn't there that. You got Jesus now. You got Jesus now. And ain't no demon going to be stopping your prayer. Prayer doesn't go through a demon, glory to God. The prayer goes through the name of Jesus, praise God. Well, how come it ain't happened yet? It probably don't need to be happening right now. God does not work on our time clock. He's not a microwave Jesus. Are you listening to me? Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19. Notice something here. And uh, this is, you know, somebody says, well... You know, I got to pray. I got to pray so hard. I got to make sure my prayer reach heaven. Well, your prayer don't even have to reach your nose. Why? 
Verse 19, he says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God and you're not your own. I have the Holy Spirit right here. I have a Holy Spirit right here. I don't need to scream trying to get God to hear me. I don't need to get repetitive trying to get God to hear me. My goodness, man, he right here. He right here. He right here in your conscious. I mean, you remember one of the sessions I taught about how meditation is a form of prayer? And how when you, you can, you can through with your thoughts. You remember several times in the New Testament, the Bible says, and Jesus knew their thoughts. Okay. So if Jesus in the physical body knew their thoughts, how you, and the Bible says, if you, Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Uh, it, 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 you're not going to be more powerful because you scream the loudest. Yeah. Your, your prayers are not going to be more effective because you use more words than everybody else. See, a real bona fide prayer life is recognizing what Jesus has done in this new covenant and that he's, he's ready to commune with you. He's ready to, 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 to walk with you and, 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 and to honor your prayer life. The purpose of prayer is, is simple. It's a relationship with God. It's a relationship with God. It is fellowship and communion with him. That's the purpose of prayer. But we've made the purpose of prayer out to be when I need something, then I'm going to use prayer to try to get God to do it for me. That's not, that's not prayer. That's not prayer. And we've, 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 we've gotten prayer and we've, we changed God's name to Jimmy and we use prayer to say, gimme, gimme, Jimmy, Jimmy. And and that's not what this is. This is about a relationship with God. Prayer is not a monologue where you do all the talking. Prayer is a dialogue where you speak to God and he speaks back to you. It is communing. It is communion. And if you're basing your Christian life on, you know, well, I ain't got what I prayed for yet. So I don't know if there's a God. I I don't know if I can serve a God that won't answer my prayer. Do you think you hurt God's feeling? God doesn't need you to be who you uh, to, to, to be who he is. Seriously. You're the one who got a flat tire and, and you're the one stranded on the side of the street. You know, you need God to help you. God don't need you to help him. I remember when God said, (laughs) he said, I own the cattle of the, uh, he he said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. He says, but why? Because I own the cattle of a thousand hills. Why would I ask you? You need to be asking me. And somehow we get this attitude like we're going to upset God because we decide, well, if he didn't give us what we wanted, when we wanted it, and like we ask and all that kind of stuff, then I just don't believe him. Tough luck. So, so you better get it straight before this thing comes to an end and you end up in hell because of your unbelief. You didn't go there because of your behavior. You went there because you wouldn't believe. Some of y'all looking at me. <laughs> what the heck done got on you tonight? I'm just, I'm just talking about If you're going to live by the Bible, then this is what it is. This is what, and we got to confront these prayer fables. It's just, it's, it's, it's comical. And in heaven, they're looking like, if Jesus were to come to some of our churches, Jesus would have to, would have to stop and ask the ushers what they're doing. <laughs> Well, I don't know, Jesus. They say they're having church. Uh, well, ain't none of this going on where I'm coming from. You know, yes. Wow. Look at Matthew chapter 10 and verses 1 and 8. I want to show you something here. Sometimes when we have to use our authority to command sickness and to cast out devils, uh, that's a type of prayer, too. A type of prayer where you're, 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 you're praying your authority or loosen your authority. The word authority means the right to command. And so you have been given uh, Luke chapter, uh, where is that at? 10 verse 19. He says, I gave you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will by any means hurt you. And so uh, you see in Luke 10, 19, there, that uses the power twice. First, in the, I gave you power or authority, authority. That's the right to command. And then the second power is ability. He says, I gave you authority 
or the right to command over all of the ability of the devil, which means he's not telling you what to do. You telling him what to do. Okay. And he says uh, in verse 10, and when he had called unto him, his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, I'll tell you the path that I'm on right now. I believe that we're more than what we know, and I believe we have untapped power that we don't quite know how to turn on. And, 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 and the reason why I believe it, I'm, I'm doing a very controversial study. I'm free from people, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release it, okay? I, I'm studying all of the wars, uh, all of the battles, uh, slavery, the Spanish Inquisition, uh, everything. As a result of what happened on January the 6th, I'm like, okay, let's talk about this. You know, one, the one thing that all of those things have in common? They all did it based on scripture that was taken out of context. Every bit of it. All did it from Scripture taken out of context. Yeah, s- s- slavery was <laughs> strictly all about, you know, you, you see those things in the New Testament about slaves and stuff. I don't even read that. That's, you got to understand, Paul got, got, got what he got on the road to Damascus, and he had to grow too, just like everybody else. And you could see his growth. There were certain things he was saying was okay, and then he, you keep, keep reading on, then he changed his mind, and he continued to grow. Ain't no way in the world you're going to justify slavery because you found the scripture in the Bible and took it out of context. Okay, but that's the same way wars were fought. That's the same way the crusades were fought. Millions of people died in the, in, in, now I'm, I'm a historian, I love that. And millions of people died based on scripture taken out of context. And here we are in 2023, and somebody around here right now basing what they're doing on scripture out of context. And this is why I stay on this, that we got to start reading this Bible in context or somebody going to take it out of context and use it to justify some wickedness. I got a lot I could say, but I'm online right now, and I don't want to go. I don't want to go viral, but I, I am going to. I'm, I'm studying this down to the T. I'm pulling stuff up. I'm going to the National Archives. I, I, I want to see exactly in the handwriting of some of these people. I want to see exactly what they wrote down. You should see what Christopher Columbus wrote down before he went and and killed a whole. Let me hush. In his own handwriting. Said these people should be very easy to enslave. In his own handwriting. And I'm trying to figure out. So I'm digging stuff up in the, in the National Archives. I'm finding letters and saying, oh, look at what that said there. That ain't what that said in that book. Oh, and they got scripture and verse? This is why I'm not letting you off the hook. You got to start living your Christian life in context and quit taking the text out of the context and being left with the con. And if you'll do it with prayer scriptures, then you'll do it with other scriptures. And the next thing you'll know, you'll be taking scripture out of context to justify something dumb and stupid you're doing. Well, I'm the man of the wife, uh, house, but the Bible, the Bible says, slap me down if she disobey. It, that, where do you get that from? It also says, if your right hand defend you, cut it off. Well, why you, why you still got hands? Because you, yo, yo. I apologize. I ain't trying, I ain't trying to start no trouble. I'm just... You know, I'm just, I, you know, I don't know how long we got on this earth. I don't know how long you got on the earth. I just want you to hear the truth before you see Jesus. And listen, listen. So you won't go up in heaven with all that tomfoolery. 
And so in my, in my morning walks, God has been challenging me to think. Yeah. Yeah. All of that, what I just said, I'm working on that to go with this right here. The apostles, the apostles were with Jesus and Jesus was telling them some things. But Jesus said, I have so much more to show you. But you can't bear it now. See, you just. <laughs> oh, God. I have so much more to show you, but you can't bear it now. But I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. And he is going to lead and guide you into truth that I didn't have that I couldn't tell you at the time. He is still leading and guiding us in the truth that might not be written right there. See, y'all freaking out now. See, you're freaking out. Because anytime somebody... See, the Holy Ghost wants to say some things to you practically. He wants to say some things to you specifically. He wants to show you things to come. They'll line up with the Word, but He's trying to take you a little deeper. But you won't go no deeper because you're still stuck with the elements, the elementaries of the Logos written Word when He's trying to expand and deepen your relationship with Him through the spoken rhema word that comes from the Spirit of God. But you don't want to let you, 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 you stuck in elementary school. You scared. Well, I ain't scared no more. I walk and I'm like, all right, I'll think, show me. He'll say stuff to me. He says, why do people pursue anything as long as it'll make them happy? He's training me on those walks. I'm like, huh? He said, why? He said, you notice most of the time, People assign something and give it a greater value than me, and then they seek the thing that makes them happy, but it's not me. He says, you know what just happened? They just entered into idolatry, and they don't even know it. They have, a, they have declared their dependence to something with, with greater value than they give me. And then they say that they trust me, but they end up trusting the thing they assign the value to as long as it makes them happy. So should happiness be the ultimate goal? And I'm sitting there like, God, you're blowing my mind. Where are these scriptures at? Now, you're in the Bible right now. Just, just keep going. I was like... Well, what chapter and verse? Ain't no chapter and verse. I'm trying to talk to you. Think. And then after I finish thinking, then he'll show me what he was doing in the scripture, but didn't have time to unfold the whole thing out. Does God want you happy? Yes, he wants you happy. Does he want you happy even if you have to, to, to give a greater value to something else other than him? No. Happiness at all costs. And I started thinking, oh, my goodness, are there going to be people alive today that will follow me as I lead from the future instead of from the past? Yeah. Yeah. There are, not, there are not too many places I can go preach right now. <laughs> Seriously, because they think this guy has lost it. But what I'm doing is I'm seeing through these new covenant eyes where there was... Do you actually think that Jesus told us everything? He even said there wouldn't be enough books. And we think that we, we got everything here. And, and then the sad part is, it, is we're not really going back and looking at, okay, so who gave us the Bible? Who put it together? Be careful. Where did it come from? Historically speaking, where did it come from? I'm not going to talk about that right now. That's not saying that, that's, that, 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 that something's wrong in there. I'm just saying... You have to read it carefully because some of the translators elected to use certain words instead. That's why we're always having to go back to the original Greek and the original Hebrew and discover that ain't what that meant. 
like where the Bible talks about the tree. And he says, you know, whatever tree don't bear fruit, he'll cut you off. And you think, well, God, no, he done cut me off. And you know, when you cut a limb off, it dies because it ain't connected to the thing. That ain't what he was talking about. The original word there is arrow, which means whatever branch is not bearing fruit, he will bear you up, hold you up, and support you towards the sun like a good vine dresser until you're able to bear the fruit that you're not bearing. Are you following what I'm saying? Stuff out of context, like like context, like Hebrews 10 and I think it's uh, 24, where it says, um, you know, if you sin willfully, then there is no more sacrifice for your sin. And all my life, I thought, well, you know, oh, my God, I sinned. It was willful. Well, wait a minute. Every sin is willful. What sin is not willful? When you slap somebody, what you going to say? Oh, I made a mistake. That wasn't willful. <laughs> when you cut somebody out, oh, I did that. I slipped and cussed out. That wasn't willful either. Every sin is willful. He's not talking about that. In proper context, what he's saying was Jesus became the sin offering for all mankind. And if you willfully, if you willfully go and, and get and, and, and get animal sacrifices and, and put those, make those sacrifices. He says they don't work no more because Jesus is the final sacrifice. And if you don't choose Jesus, then there remaineth no more sacrifices for your sin because Jesus is the sacrifice for your sin. And, and, and it pumps condemnation. It ain't nothing wrong with the Bible. It's those who don't know how to rightly divide it and rightly interpret it between what is of, of, of the unconditional covenant and what is of the conditional covenant. And if you don't know that, then you'll keep praying the Lord's prayer, thinking something's supposed to happen. The Lord's prayer is an outline showing you how to pray. You remember the question? Lord, teach us how to pray. And Jesus says, all right, outline one. Our Father, who, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That means come in with worship and praise and hallowed his name. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Mekedesh. You are the mighty God. You are. It's a praise sandwich. Look, read the Lord's Prayer. It's start off with praise and worship, end up with praise. And in between, Lord, that's the manner that we pray in. But we want to still stay stuck in tradition and religion. You can tell I'm free because if I wasn't free... <laughs> If I wasn't free, there ain't no way in the world I'd be saying this and knowing it's online. I, if I wasn't free, if I wasn't free, I wouldn't be preaching grace. It's just we don't have much time and we're still fooling around with tradition. There's nothing in the Bible that justifies you hating somebody because of the color of their skin. None. None. There's no way in the Bible telling you that one man's smarter than another man because of the color of his skin. None. That's stupid. That's tomfoolery. That's just like saying that your, your white Mercedes is better than my black Mercedes because it's got a different paint color. This just is stupid. It's getting, it's getting more, it's getting ridiculous. It's, it's becoming, I mean, we gotta, we gotta be careful. It's, we're, we're becoming almost laughable. Okay, I apologize for going off like that, but anytime I start getting into a deep study, it kind of seep out. But I, I'm, 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 I'm working on this thing, but I got to make sure I have all my ducks in a row, uh, historically speaking, biblically speaking. And when I preach it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach this thing and let, let, it, let, let it reel and rock like I want to reel and rock. Well, what if people don't agree with you? Listen, if I wanted people to agree with me, I would not be preaching the gospel of grace. All righty then. So, we have authority. He gave us authority. To cast out unclean spirits. Well, I don't believe in unclean spirits. Nobody cares. There are unclean spirits. The Bible says so. Nobody cares if you don't believe in it. That's you. You know, I don't believe that's your real hair, but nobody cares. 
No, nobody cares. Nothing's going to change because you disagree. We think that the whole world's going to change because I don't agree. Everybody has an opinion. You're either going to live by your opinion or you're going to live by what the Word of God has to say. You're going to live by how the Spirit of God leads and guides your life. Heaven's not, heaven doesn't care because you say, well, I disagree. I don't believe in no unclean spirits. <laughs> he said, I gave them power against unclean spirits. So there must be some unclean spirits. But if you ever find some, hey, you can cast them out. He says, I gave you power to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So what's going on with our power? We have it. What's going on with our power? We don't know who we are and we don't recognize and we don't know how to turn on our power. So I'm starting with the obvious. I'm building some things in my notes. I'm starting with the obvious. I got this brand new book, empty pages. So I want to keep up with all this. So if something happened to me, somebody, I'll have the start of it right there. I do know I got power with my mouth. I knew I got power with my words. I do know, I do know I have that. I do know I have the power of prayer. I, I do know those kind of things. I do know that. I knew there's power in praying in, in tongues. I do know that. But what was God going to do with Adam and Eve before Satan came in the garden? If Satan never came in the garden, where were we on our way to? He created a man never to die. Then something happened in the garden and now the man dies. Where were we supposed to be? We weren't created to be mortal. We were created never to die. And now we die. We don't know who we are. We don't know the power we got. Well, my pathway is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to discover this power. I'm going to walk in this thing. I'm walking in this thing. I'm going to walk in this thing. You understand what I'm saying? The devil cannot mess with me for some three years and try to kill me and me just stay the same. Oh, well, glad that's over. No, bro, it's recompense time. You got to pay. You don't, you, don't, you don't get to touch me and, and, and just I be the same. No, 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 no. He said you can cast them out and you can heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You have power. But it's kind of like a superhero. Somebody got to show you how to turn it on, how to use it. You, you, you have the ability to fly. Somebody got to show you how to fly. But we can't because we still stuck on what happened with Daniel in the lion's den in the old covenant. <laughs> You're still testifying about what happened in the old covenant when a greater covenant has come with greater promises and greater power. And you, you, you won't pay no attention to that. Dude, I, I'm, I'm so not going to like just get, con, just get so just satisfied. I'm like, okay, well, oh well, it is what it is. Let's go to church. This is the way we go to church. Go to church. Go to church. This is the way we go to church early. On. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. There's something bigger. There's something greater. And we need to start pursuing it. Amen. All right. Look at verse eight. I need to get done. I'm Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, raise the... Did he say that? Cast out devils, freely you have received. He says we've received it. Something wrong. We, where's the on off switch? It, it, we already got it. Don't know how to operate it. Don't know how to operate it. Don't know how to operate it. Just not willing to discover the... The operation in the operation manual. It's in here somewhere. Got to learn how to operate it. Think about it. You go to heaven. You start talking to God. Why, why that? Why this? Why that? Why that? He's like, dude, you, you had it the whole time. Here, let me show you. All you had to do is do this. He did that with his disciples. His disciples met this man who had a son. And uh, the son had been possessed with demons. And he was trying to. The demons were throwing the boy in the fire and trying to draw, drown him, and he was having fits. And the father was like, man, please help him. And Jesus showed up, and he said, Jesus, look, I came to your disciples to cast this demon out, but they could not. They should have, because they've done it before. They should have, because they had the power. The very thing they could not do that day, they had already done it before. 
the scriptural evidence where they had cast out spirits before and that they had healed the sick before. So what was different about this one? I'll tell you what was different. They kept considering what they saw. Convulsing, throwing up, body bending all kinds of ways. They're hearing that demon, seeing that demon, and they were considering it more. And then when Jesus showed up and the boy's son had enough nerve to go to Jesus and said, if you can. Jesus like, what? If? Do you not know who I am? Who do you think you're talking to? If? And he's like, oh, how long do I have to be with y'all before y'all get this thing? And went up there and said, come out. And the demon came out immediately. The boy set free. And the disciple was like, so they didn't say nothing right at that part. They just kind of like, you know, come on, let's, let's get with Jesus for a minute. <laughs> they got with Jesus. They said, Jesus, can we ask you something? Yeah. Um, how come we could not cast him out? And Jesus says, I don't know. All, all you needed was faith the size of a mustard seed. You know how small that is? But you want to know the answer to this? He said, this kind cometh not out except by fasting and prayer. And the church world thought he was talking about this kind of demon. Think about that. You, he gave you power to cast out demons, and now you got to go and do something to earn the right to cast it out. So you got to go and fast to cast the demon out. He wasn't talking about the demon. He was saying this kind of unbelief unbelief short circuits power that's a start unbelief short circuits power well how did I get to unbelief the thing you give attention to the most the thing you consider the most you don't consider the word you don't give attention to the word your heart becomes hardened to the word even though you read it every now and then say oh I believe that but you ain't spending no time with it so your heart becomes hardened to that and the thing you give attention to and pay attention to the most, that's what you're flexible and ready to do. And that's what happened to them. Their, their, their power was hijacked by what they considered and valued more than God and his promises. Well, that explains what's going on with us. We getting hijacked 24 hours a day. People, thank God you're Christians and you're here, but folks who ain't saved, they don't believe nothing. So there you go. And you're surrounded by it. And so the power ain't working because of what you're considering. Wow. So when I loose my authority and I say... In the name of Jesus, be healed. That's, that's an authoritative prayer. I am loosening my thought. That's an authoritative prayer that God will honor just like he will. Meditation, praying in tongues, all that. In the name of Jesus, no storm will injure my house because God has commanded the angels to watch over me. You going around... I don't want to hurt your feeling, but and them, this is, and I know, and I can prove it, but I ain't got time to. The Bible says angels hearken after the voice of the word. He's talking about the word of God. God had already commanded the angels and told the angels what to do. Your job is just to receive what he said and believe it. In the name of Jesus, I am protected because angels, you know what God has already commanded you to do. You watch over me because God commanded you to do that. You busy going around, angel, when I go to the grocery store, you just better make sure that when I come up there that, 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 that they, they let me have all these groceries for free. What's the matter with you? And we, and we playing these little church games. And people, it's, it's, 
it's over. These fables are over because God's got a remnant of men and women on this earth that will go in, rightly divide the word, spend time with God, hear a rhema, and they'll, st- and, and they'll get up and preach the truth. All this other stuff, you know, uh, if my people, what you call, all that stuff is over because you got all that stuff got to be fixed as we go towards the future. So I, I don't, I don't know how much time we have towards the future. So what God will do with some leaders is he's going to have them to lead from the future. So the stuff that's going to be in the future, he's going to have us to leave from the future to kind of help prepare the way as it goes. Jesus did that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He was leading from the future. He said, up until now, you've asked me nothing, but there's coming a time. I think I had too much tumor this morning, boy. <laughs> Taff and I, we're just like done with these fables. We're done. And then when you come to church, you, some people come to church just to hear what they already know. Yes, sir. And when they're challenged to think, I don't know about, I don't know about what Pastor Dahl said. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. Then nobody tell you not to tithe. You can tithe all you want to. You can continue to do just what's required. Or you can break out of that and come on over here to the new covenant and start giving generously so that you won't be in bondage to any system that falls that you were dependent on. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Pastor, what's going on with you? I am so fed up with religion. It's just, it's just, you, you just represented an opportunity tonight for me to just let her rip. That's all. I'm tired of screaming at myself. All right, Proverbs 18, and then I'll let you go. I'm done. Proverbs 18, 21. We should not spend five seconds in faith and 45 minutes in unbelief rehearsing the problem. We should not spend five seconds in faith and 45 minutes in unbelief rehearsing the problem. Oh, Lord, I'm sick. Oh, Lord, I'm sick by pain. And you know how bad the pain is, Lord. And Lord, I'm sick and I'm broken. I'm broken and I'm sick of Jesus. And now I'm sick and I'm tired and I'm tired and I'm sick, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, help me, Jesus. I'm just so tired and sick and tired. Oh, these children getting on my nerves. Oh, Jesus. I can't stand them. My hair coming out. Everything going on. I'm just fed up with it. I'm tired of poking beans, too. Lord, bring some faith. Hallelujah, What are we doing? There are people that pray like that. You know it. Some of you used to pray like that. Spend 45 minutes rehearsing a problem. <laughs> What's going on, Pastor? I don't know. I'm good, man. I'm all right. <laughs> My wife probably at home like, boy, what's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, look at this. Death and life. All right, there's another little hint. Is in the power of the tongue. The word power simply means the ability to get the job done. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So even in prayer, your words produce either death or life. Are you praying death or are you praying life? Praying God's solution from the word releases life. But praying negatively and focusing on your problems only energizes and strengthens those problems. So the real question is, are you praying or complaining? The only difference is you on your knees. Are you praying or complaining? Think about some of the stuff that you say in prayer. And if you're spending the majority of your prayer time with the problem, you probably need to just be quiet. 
And if you're on your knees just worrying, that's not prayer life. It's not a prayer life. I believe the shift has taken place, but I believe we're experiencing more than one shift. And God's getting ready to do some amazing things in our lives as we begin to open ourselves up to what the Spirit of God wants to say to us and do with us, how he wants to speak to us. Yeah, I'm going after the whole world. If they discover that there's life on Mars, we have to believe God for a space shuttle because they need Jesus. Think about something. You wonder, well, if there's life out there. Yeah, there's life out there, but I don't believe it's like us. God made man in his own image and breathed his essence into a physical body, gave him eternal life. And I guarantee you, ain't nothing like us in the universe we may not be 30 feet tall, but when we say bow to knee, that angel got to obey in the future of whatever time is going to be. There's something about us that God ha- is working on and preparing, and I got to believe it's something about the future that's going to be shocking. You don't quite know why you put us here and let us experience this thing called life. Like he hired life to train and condition us for something. You ain't going through what you're going through for nothing. Just in the natural, when you go through stuff, you come out better. So put the sum total together. Put 80 years of it together. And you going to heaven think y'all going to be floating and sucking lollipops and sipping on coke. That ain't, that ain't what that is. There is a huge purpose for this and you can't be afraid and now we got to pursue his presence and don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit dealing with your thinking and your thoughts (sighs) well (laughs) Right. Now, y'all know that word was a lot better now. Come on now. Give it up. Wow. It's just getting better and better and better and better, isn't it? I tell you, um, reading scripture from the right context and rightly dividing it is a game changer. Changed my life. Amen? Y'all know what time it is. It's gracious giving time. Amen? If you need an offering envelope, please raise your hands and the ushers will get one to you. Aren't y'all glad that it's not a law to give anymore like he was speaking about prayer under the Old Testament and prayer under the New Testament? Remember how giving was in the Old Testament? Now we get to freely give, freely from our hearts. And the great thing about this relationship is the generous God lives on the inside of us and he gives us the desire to give. And he tells you what to give. He gives you the desire to want to give that. So tap into that desire tonight as you give. For those of you online, the ways to give are on the screen. Uh, You can text World Changers space and the amount to 74483. You can text, call 1-866-477-7683, or you can mail it in at 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349. And of course, if you want to give via web with PayPal, you can give at worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. And of course, the last but not least, if you want to give by way of QR code, you simply put your phone up to
We declare over it that it will multiply a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you may receive these, the offering at this time. Now at this time, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, one of the things I want you to think about tonight is everything that we learn and we experience is because Christ lives on the inside of us. I think that's very big to know and understand that when you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, Jesus himself moves on the inside of your heart and lives there. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of us. If any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This means your spirit is new and it's just like Christ. It's perfect just like he is. So I want you to think about that. If you've never received Jesus, you're missing out on Jesus living on the inside of you and having a personal relationship with him. So we're going to make this prayer very easy because Jesus said my yoke is easy and we're going to make this prayer easy. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. Right now, I repent for my sins. Today, I make you Lord of my life. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died for my sins. Now save me and help me get to know you. In Jesus' name, I declare that I'm saved. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for those who got saved today. Praise God. Praise God. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with me today, text the keyword, I'm saved, as one word to 51555. Provide your name and email address, and we will send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Amen? All right. Get to know them. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Let's stand so we can dismiss. I declare over your lives that the best is yet to come. The best of wealth, the best of health to overtake you and your families. The blessing of God is working in you, through you, and for you, and making you rich and adding no sorrow with it. I declare that the angels have charge over you. You have divine protection over your lives, and you are blessed and highly favored. Now go in peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all are dismissed.